I'm sick of it. I'm sick of this headset and I'm sick of this company. The Elite Strap doesn't work. The Quest 3 is selling poorly. The Quest 2 is getting yet another price drop. Zuck is hospitalized from too much Kitsune AI. And Meta is releasing a Quest 2.5. Today, I'm going to summarize everything that's happened regarding the Quest 2 and the Quest 3 over the last couple of weeks so you know what's actually going on at the moment, including the Quest 2 being literally the cheapest it has ever been. It's actually ridiculous how cheap you can buy this headset right now. And if anything, I go over today is full useful in any. Basically, I drove into an unlit curb at 2 a.m. and I need a new room and suspension components way shape or form a like and subscribe would be much appreciated also join my discord over at discord.gg forward slash get if you want free to free toenail reviews okay basically the quest 3 is not selling well at all according to this forbes article and an international securities analyst meta seems to have cut its q4 2023 quest 3 shipment forecast by 5 to 10 percent which is not insignificant in the third quarter of this year meta lost a reported 3.7 billion and is down about 46 billion dollars since 2019 that's despite the quest 1 the quest 2 and the quest 3 release the quest 3 it's a very very good headset but nobody cares no one cares because meta basically isn't marketing the headset for some reason it honestly feels like they're not even trying they have literally in my opinion one of the best if not the best vr consumer headset of all time in their hands and they can't seem to do more than just a reveal a trailer some limp dick banner ads and a couple of youtube ads sprinkled in there it's nearly christmas where is the marketing in complete fairness they did put this on a on a big Ball. The $130 Quest 3 Elite battery strap is also failing with users reporting charging issues. Basically, sometimes the head strap seems to charge the headset and sometimes doesn't charge it at all. Road to VR conducted their own poll with Quest 3 Elite strap users and found that 43% of their respondents state that they've experienced similar charging issues. Meta themselves have actually stated that their engineering team is actively working on finding a solution. And it just so happens, during the editing of this video, Meta has actually halted the sales of the Elite battery strap due to the widespread for a charging fault. That's just how bad this situation has actually gotten. I don't know what it is with this company and their f***ing elite straps, but their quality control seems like absolute ass. It goes without saying, don't buy this sh I mean, like it is sh I can't believe how Meta thought that these accessory prices were remotely reasonable. I mean, $130 for a plastic head strap with a battery in it that doesn't even consistently charge the headset. If you've already spent $400 on the headset to begin with, is nuts. But the Quest 2 did just drop from $300 down to $250 in a holiday deal. And it's really great that I'm telling you all this while the Black Friday sales are still active and this video definitely didn't get delayed by multiple days because I had unstoppable tonsillitis and couldn't f***ing speak. Mm. This thing is dirt cheap now, especially secondhand, with some going for about 100 British pounds, which is around $125. There's actually quite a few of these headsets being sold at this price point due to all the people who bought these headsets last Christmas and then ended up not using them. Obviously, buying a VR headset secondhand is a little stinky stanky, but you can use the money that you saved just to replace the face pad with a third party one. This headset, it's still worth it. I mean, this is an entire gaming console with a huge range of multiplayer experiences. Obviously, if you have the money for a quest 3 buy that but for 250 dollars brand new or 120 dollars second hand that's a great goddamn deal so good of a deal that the quest 2 at least at the time of making this video is the number one top seller on amazon a three-year-old headset the quest 3 in comparison is sat at number 26 which is proof that either the quest 3's couple of hundred dollar more price point is just slightly too much for the average mainstream consumer or that the marketing for the quest 3 just straight up sucks i personally think it's a bit of a mix of both but it is a breath of fresh air to see that the quest 2 is beating out the playstation 5 it makes me sad that the online vr scene is so dead at the moment when it's literally easier than ever to pick one of these headsets up the quest 3's charging port like the quest 2's can melt thanks dad in all seriousness this seems to be caused by using higher wattage chargers so i suggest just sticking to the stock charger for the time being the quest 2 and the quest 3 are getting an update on the public test channel in the form of the 60 which shown by lunar on twitter seems to significantly improve the way head movement affects avatar movement as you can see here what else did update v60 add i have no f***ing idea because at the time of recording this video the release notes haven't been published by meta thanks dad valve just launched a completely free official steam link app on the quest the app which was approved by meta lets you wirelessly play steam vr games from your pc it's similar to pc vr streaming services like virtual desktop and quest link but to see valve release a dedicated app like this on the quest store is a pretty huge change for the pc vr versus native vr crowd it's also pretty huge for valve showing that they're open to the future of vr being native and clearly shows that they're still very invested in vr we'll obviously have to see how this stacks up against the quest airlink and guy Gooden's virtual desktop but for now this is a pretty freaking 
huge deal. There's another quest headset coming in the form of what is basically a Quest 2.5. Meta signed a deal with the Chinese company Tencent to sell a Quest 3 Lite. Allegedly, this headset will use cheaper lenses than the Quest 3, but a more powerful GPU than the Quest 2, and it will be also sold outside of China as well. This will seemingly be a full flagship product, which will be aimed to be priced at the most attractive price point in the VR consumer market. The headset will also feature the same Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 chipset as the Quest 3, and it looks like Meta may actually ship the headset next year and without controllers, instead opting to sell the controller separately in order to get the price of the headset down to the $300 of the Quest 2. If I'm honest, at the moment, like probably most of you, I don't really care. It's not a Quest 3 and it's also not a Quest 2. It's just a weird middle child without controllers, especially when you can just get the Quest 2 pretty dirt cheap second hand. Why would you buy this over just jumping straight from a Quest 2? to a Quest 3. I don't know. I'm worried that we're ending up with too many headsets that people aren't even buying as the marketing is borderline non-existent for any of them. On top of this, a Quest Pro 2 seems to be coming as well after the disaster that was the original Quest Pro. This Quest 2.5 slash Quest 3 Lite might be great. You know what is? Great. Sponsorship, get that bear. LVR sponsored this segment to help fix my Subaru. They are very nice people with a very nice game. Sponsor aside, Veil is actually one of my favorite VR FPSs. It's incredibly mechanically satisfying, very clean cut, and is fundamentally a very engaging VR FPS. The game just got a full release on the Quest in the form of its App Lab release. The game runs flawlessly on my Quest 3, and in my opinion, is a much better fit gameplay-wise for a native VR headset. If you're looking for a fresh VR FPS made by people who repeatedly play their own game, finding the mechanics to be as satisfying as possible, check out Veil now on App Lab. Just search for it in the Quest Store and it will show up under the App Lab section. Thank you guys for sponsoring this video. You are all very cool. And now I have a functioning car. Assassin's Creed VR actually seems to be a banger of a VR title, a true AAA VR title. Ubisoft have seemingly knocked it out of the park, providing a graphically impressive, content-rich Assassin's Creed VR game. I say seemingly because at the time of writing and recording this, I haven't gotten the chance to play it as I've had motherfucking son of a tonsillitis for the last three days so i'll just display on screen after i've played it if it's any good or not i was pretty concerned about this game when the first trailers released which were all this weird cgi fake vr gameplay and the screenshots that were released also didn't seem to look like true gameplay either it just looked as if they were hiding the actual true raw gameplay but it's here now for 40 dollars coupled with asgard's wrath 2 this means that we have two serious legitimate triple a vr titles both for the quest 2 and 3 for this christmas again crazy Crazy that Meta isn't ramping up the marketing for these headsets yet. I mean, I feel like I'm going f***ing insane. VR content and VR hardware quite literally hasn't been this good ever. Yet despite this, a VR viewership and VR NRS across the board has flatlined. I just got nominated for VR creator of the year, apparently. I don't know what the f*** this award is, who made it, or who makes this decision, but I'm on it, apparently, and a lot of people seem to care, tearing each other to shreds over who is and isn't included on this list. But this recent news, the sales of this headset, and now this nomination, got me f***ing thinking. I'm not a VR creator. I started my channel making Breaking Bad, Spider-Man, and Walking Dead edits. I've been making videos since I had iMovie on my mom's iPad. I love VR. I grew this channel primarily off of VR, but I've used it always as a way to make content that I hope isn't just VR content, and I hope any of of you that are subscribed to me actually appreciates the content on this channel is creatively driven rather than just viewership driven. I don't make a video unless I have something that I want to say or do with the content. Right now, I just hate this scene. I like to think that my last few videos were some of my best from a creative standpoint, but at this point, I feel pretty restricted by this medium and the incompetence of this goddamn company. I'm gonna keep making VR content through Christmas, and if this headset doesn't sell well and bring in viewership to facilitate the sort of creative content that I want to make with this medium, I'm going to just start to filter in some content from outside of VR. It's going to be a process of trial and error, but I'm more than this f***ing headset and I'm more than this f***ing company. You guys are the only people that have ever, like, actually understood me, and I want to know what you guys think. Thank you for all being here. I appreciate it very much. Lissy.